Bose have finally replaced their incredibly popular QC35 headphones with these, the QC45s. But how do they stack up against my favorite ever noise cancelling headphones, the Sony XM4s? Hello and welcome back to Mark Ellis Review. Oh. That's better. Welcome back to Mark Ellis Reviews and thank you for subscribing. If you have, if you haven't subscribed, the button is just down there. Now, if you've watched this channel at all, you will know that I absolutely adore the Sony XM4 over the ear noise cancelling headphones. They are just the best headphones I've ever owned. And they're becoming more of a bargain by the day. I've seen these on Amazon in the UK for £249, which is just brilliant. However, I'm acutely aware that Bose for many, many years have been a lot of people's default choice when it comes to noise cancelling headphones. I've never owned a pair of Bose noise cancelling headphones ever. My dad had a pair of QC35s, he loved them, and millions of other people did. If you've been on a flight in the last five or six years, I can guarantee there will have been someone either sat next to you or in the same aisle or somewhere wearing a pair of QCs. Now the QC35s were the, the big seller, if you like, for Bose, and their replacement, which is these, the QC45s, have been quite a long time coming. But they're here now, I've got them, I've had them for a couple of days, and in today's video I'm going to find out if they can replace my beloved Sony XM4s. Right, let's look at some of these specs for the QC45s, I'm going to have to refer to them, bear with me. They come with world-class noise cancelling, which has more than 50 years of research behind it. Great. There's a new aware mode, which is Bose's version of transparency mode, where it filters in outside noise. 24 hours of battery life, that's really good. And if you charge them for 15 minutes from dead, it will give you about three hours of playback time. It takes two and a half hours to recharge them to full. That's not bad at all. They've also got a noise rejecting mic system. Now I had to look this up and this is kind of, basically improves or is supposed to improve the calling capabilities of these headphones. You can also apparently share noise cancellation with the people that you're calling. And it does this apparently by isolating your voice and getting rid of the external noise around you basically. So that in theory, the person on the other end of the phone can only hear your voice. That's it. And if we compare them against the QC35s, now battery life, you get about four hours more with these. You also get USB-C, you didn't get USB-C on the QC35s, so they had that horrible mini USB thing, that's, that's gone. These have got a proper USB-C connection. And as I mentioned in the intro, it's a very similar design to the QC35s. Although I've not owned the QC35s, so I've held a pair in my hand. And these look and feel very similar. And actually, both themselves say the design aesthetic is a identifiable classic. Few changes, there are no pleats on the ear pads. Not sure what that means. And they've apparently closed gaps to create smooth transitions. No idea what that means either, but they do look pretty similar. They just look like a slightly updated version of the QC35s. Now, interestingly, Bose doesn't make much of a claim about the improved sound capabilities of these over the QC35s, which is a bit weird, but they do make quite a big deal about the improvements to the noise cancelling. And in particular, they can detect and silence more mid-range frequencies. So that is things like trains, background office noise, the sort of things that you're gonna wanna block out really. But you don't care about any of that. What you wanna know, the reason you're watching this video is because you want to know if the QC 45s are better than the Sony XM4s. Now bear in mind that this comparison is based on just a few days use of these and an entire year's use of these. Crucially, I haven't tested these properly for calls yet. I'm gonna do that in a future video. Remember to subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss that one. So today's comparison is solely about the build quality, comfort, noise cancelling, and of course, how they sound. Right, build quality. Immediately, these feel quite light. I'm used to pretty heavy headphones these days. The Sony XM4s are just, they're nicely heavy. They feel weighty enough to be quite expensive and premium. By comparison, the Bose headphones are, they're not flimsy, they're just, they're just lighter. And there's a slight hollowness to the construction, which you don't get with the Sony XM4s. The other thing, the plastics are, they're not bad, but they're not of the quality of the Sony XM4 plastics. That's one thing that I love about these headphones is that they're so well made. And after a year's use, there's not a mark on them. They're just as good as the day I bought them. So there's a lot to live up to with these. And it's little things like the click on the band adjustment on the QC45s versus that. This just feels more satisfying, a bit, a bit better. 
In terms of the padding material, it's not bad. It's not as deep as the Sony XM4s. These do depress a lot further and they feel a bit firmer in a, in a good way. I'm acutely aware that people have had issues with wear and tear of these over 12 months, 18 months. People have had to replace the ear cushions and even replace the band. First impressions though, they're, they're well made. You know, they're just this hollow feeling. Now onto the case. The case is super, super important with headphones. I hate it when you buy a pair of over-the-ear headphones and they come with like a flimsy bag that you're supposed to throw them into or you buy a pair of headphones that are 550 pounds <clears throat> apple and the case is just not a case it's just the worst thing anyone has ever made ever this is another reason why i love the sony x4s because the case is just amazing it's brilliant it's made out of this lovely fabric material that doesn't get marked Very, you know there's a lot of resistance there you can throw this into anything any sort of bag and not worry about your headphones this is the gold standard i think of headphone cases so bose qc 45s what's it like um i like the look of it i like the shape of it it's quite a convenient shape to throw into your bag and stuff is it leather i don't know no idea if it's leather or not i'm not very good at that sort of stuff but it's not a bad material However, it will definitely scuff, and I have scuffed it already within two days. I don't think that's gonna wear particularly well, which is a bit of a shame, really, but there you go. There is more resistance. You can definitely press it in more than you can press in the Sony XM4 case. So that loses a few marks there, although you'd still have to do quite a lot to it, I think, to, to break the headphones inside. So not a bad little package, but again, in terms of build quality, the Sony XM4s do win. Bearing in mind, these are cheaper at the moment than the QC 45s. You're getting more for your money with these. In terms of comfort, now I've only lived with these for a couple of days, like I say, but they are incredibly comfortable headphones immediately. Some over the ear headphones take a while to get used to and they can start to hurt your ears after a while. I've worn these for a few hours in one go, no problems there whatsoever. Compared against the Sony XM4s, there's not much in it in terms of comfort while these are on your head. They're both very, very comfortable headphones. I wear these for hours on end with no problems and I think it's gonna be the same for these really. Now, another point of reference for comfort and living with headphones like this is their battery life. And again, I've not had them long enough to give you a full thumbs up on them, but they're gonna be pretty good. You know, 24 hours alone is great. Now, I've often said this, that standby time trumps in use battery time for a lot of devices. I think headphones are squarely in that bracket. I wanna know that if I leave these for two or three days or a week or even a month, let's say, that when I go and pick them up again, they're not going to have lost either any or very little battery. The Sony XM4s, again, are the gold standard for this. I hardly ever seem to charge these. They've always got battery in them and the standby time is just epic. It remains to be seen if these are similar. I think they probably will be. Both have been in this game long enough now to know how to make a battery for a pair of headphones. And crucially, you can turn them completely off. You know, there's a button on the side, you flick it off, gone. And also, while I'm on the subject of buttons, they have proper clicky buttons. There's no stupid touch-sensitive controls. There are on the Sony XM4s, although they do have some buttons on there, the ear pads are actually touch-sensitive. I hate that. It's just trying to solve a problem that, that does not exist. So to see these proper hardware clicky buttons, which have feel well made, is fantastic. There's a couple more things I want to mention in terms of comfort and living with these. One of them is the fact that there is no auto pause with these. Now with the Sony XM4s, when, you, when you're you listening to some music and then you just take them off and put them like that, it will pause the music automatically, put them back on, it resumes playing again automatically. That's actually a really useful feature. These don't have that. That's a bit of a bummer. And finding out what the battery life is, with the Sony XM4s, you can basically just press the power button whenever you want and someone will say to you, you have X percent battery life left. With these, you get a battery life status when you first turn them on and that's it. Obviously, you could look on your phone and look at the, the battery status in your Bluetooth list, but that's a bit long-winded. You can't check in, as far as I'm aware, I couldn't find any way of doing it, you can't check in on the battery life on these without turning them off and back on. That's a bit silly. And lastly, these do connect to more than one Bluetooth device, just like the Sony's. It's not bad, it works. It's nothing like Apple's W1 chip when it comes to automatically switching between devices. It's it's all right, it's quite a useful feature. I don't have too many worries about the Bose. I think Bose, like I say, have been in this game long enough to make sure these are a nice pair of headphones to live with that you can leave on your head for long periods of time. On to the sound. Now, what I do with my headphones, I never EQ them. I always just listen to them out of the box. I want to know what the manufacturer thinks these headphones should sound like. So for example, I've never EQ'd the Sony XM4s. I just listen to them as they are. And in terms of the way that I test headphones to get a bass level impression, I always turn to one single track, which is Dua Lipa, 
don't start now. I played that on these. I A-B tested with these. They are incredibly different to the XM4s, big time, for two reasons. One of them is bass. There's not quite as much bass going on with the QC45s. The Sony XM4s have got a really rounded bottom end. On the QC45s, there's a fair amount of bass. It just lacks, lacks a bit of excitement, really. The biggest difference, though, is the fact that these sound incredibly brighter than the Sony XM4s. I mentioned in my long-term review of the Sony XM4s, which I'll leave a link to above, that they do sound a little bit hollow. And this is nitpicking, because they, they sound fantastic, but if you really want to get technical about it. They do sound like they're lacking a little bit in mid-range punch. These don't. These are very bright headphones. Almost too bright for some people, I think. There's nice stereo separation. I could hear pretty much every single detail in Dua Lipa's track. For me, though, the sound of these, it's quite high fidelity. It's similar, in a way, to Apple's AirPods Max. AirPods Max, if you haven't heard them before, sound very, I've always said they sound very HD. That's not an audiophile term. You'll be laughing at me now if you're an audiophile. But in terms of consumers' perception to these types of headphones, AirPods Max sound quite expensive. These sound more like the AirPods Max than they do these, but they don't sound expensive. They're middle of the road, okay. But for me, there's just not enough bass. There's not enough excitement or richness to the sound. And I think Bose are fairly conservative with what they do with their sound profile in these. I think what sums this up, and it kind of goes against what I said at the start of this section, I would EQ these headphones to get them sounding better for me. And I might even do that just to see what I can do with them. I think the fact that I want to EQ these says quite a bit about the sound. It's not bad, but it's not particularly exciting. Noise cancellation, it's absolutely brilliant. This is the best noise cancelling I've ever heard, without a shadow of a doubt. The Sony XM4s are brilliant as well, and the AirPods Max are fantastic. But for sheer dampening and shutting out the world around you, these are still world class. I think that they're absolutely top of their game. You can see why so many people have these on flights. They are superb noise cancelling. So if your main reason for getting a pair of headphones like this is the noise cancelling, then they're a bit of a no-brainer. Now, they also have the aware mode, which is their kind of transparency mode, and that basically filters in outside noise. So you can, rather than having this kind of enveloping noise cancellation, you can actually hear what's going on around you. That's useful for two reasons. One of them is if you want to hear people talking to you, although I still think it's less rude to take your headphones off and listen to them properly. But if you like, like doing that, then fair enough, you can do it for that reason. The other reason is obviously to be more aware of your surroundings, which is absolutely fine. Oh, and there is a third reason actually, which is to do with calls. Now I mentioned on my review of the AirPods Max, which I'll leave above, that the transparency mode on AirPods Max makes a massive difference to how good they are as calling headphones. And the reason for that is that you can hear yourself. You can actually hear yourself speaking, which helps when you're on the phone to someone. I've always struggled with the XM4s with that. They're not, although they've got a kind of transparency pass-through mode, I still can't hear myself well enough. It's the same thing with the aware mode on these. I still can't really hear myself well enough to have a decent conversation with people. So yeah, the aware mode isn't on a par with transparency mode on the AirPods Max, but that's a very tough act to follow. But the noise cancelling on the QC45s is the best I've heard. Conclusion time. So, will the QC45s prize me away from the Sony XM4s as my daily carry noise cancelling headphones? I'm going to give them a chance, but it doesn't look good, and it's for a few reasons, really. One of them is the sound. I just prefer the sound on these. And the second reason is the build quality. I would never worry about these headphones. They get thrown about to a degree, and as I keep saying, they are like new. These don't inspire confidence. They feel, they're not, they're not flimsy, like I say, but they just feel like you could break them quite easily. But the biggest issue for the QC45s at the moment is the fact that you can get these, the Sony XM4s, in the UK at the moment for £249 on Amazon. These are a £319 pair of headphones. So £60 difference. And apart from the better noise cancelling with these and the fact they are a newer pair of headphones, I can't think of £60 worth of value that you're getting in these over the Sony XM4s. And this is the problem. For as long as these are this price, and okay, we'll get the XM5s at some stage probably next year, but for as long as the, you can get the XM4s for sub £300, they're still the best noise cancelling over the year headphones to get. However, if you are a Bose aficionado, I totally get why you've been waiting for these. Because as we know, 
the QC35s were just a runaway hit. If you've been waiting for the replacement to the QC35s, although there's not a massive difference with these, the fact that you do get even better noise cancelling and things like USB-C, which from a convenience perspective is huge, and also four hours extra battery life, that's not to be sniffed at. These aren't a bad upgrade at all. Anyway, I'm going to spend more time with the QC45s and report back with a longer term review. I'd also like to know, do you want me to compare these properly against the Apple AirPods Max? Let me know in the comments. If you've still got some time, keep watching for a link to my long term review of the Sony XM4s just to see what these QC45s are up against. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.